Before we start today's podcast, I would like to invite you to a free summit that I have been a part of. It is called A Journey Through Grief with Grace. The host is Diana Previs, and I am one of the expert speakers. I talk all things mediumship, I talk about suicide, I talk about how to talk to your loved ones once they have passed, and what else is possible with being a medium. There is a lineup of amazing expert speakers from all around the world, and I just know there are so many benefits of being a part of the summit. This is a passion project for so many, and if we can help ease the grief and help people work through it with understanding, I just know that we can help so many people at this time, especially with what is going on in the world. So check out the show notes down below for the link, click on it. Please feel free to send this link to other people, to share this podcast with other people, so then we can help make a difference in this time. Together we are stronger and understanding is knowledge. Sending you so much love, enjoy the podcast and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome to the Release Your Blocks podcast. I am your host, Victoria Bond. I am a spiritual empowerment coach. I help teach others to show up to their potency so they can fulfill their mission here on earth. I'm so glad you are here. And if you are interested in becoming a medium, if you're interested in becoming a life coach, or if you're interested in shifting your life from the 3D to live more in the 5D reality, then check me out, book a clarity call, and let's get chatting. Hey everybody, this is my good friend Diana Previs. Welcome Diana, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm over here in New Zealand, you are in America, so we've got a big time difference, but the reason why we wanted to be here today is to talk about your up and coming summit, a journey through grief. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm a part of the summit and the interview that you did for me was out of this world. Like we literally were talking about spirits who have committed suicide. We were literally talking about what happens on the other side. We were literally talking about how I communicate, how people can communicate. And I know I'm not the only person you interviewed. Uh, You have quite a few speakers coming into this summit and you've got a very big why of why you have done this. Now, for those of you who probably don't know, or maybe you do know, Diana and I have actually, um, we've met before by doing summits. So this isn't your first summit. This is actually your second summit. And the first one was on gut health, which is a huge importance. My mom was on Mum's Time to Shine. And we've both um, grown and evolved and um, really niched down, I'd like to say it. And um, here we are, both talking about spirit. So can you tell me a little bit about what the summit is about. Sure. Um, And thanks for having me. Um, It's always a pleasure to be in your company. So the series was inspired because while I was doing the first one, um, I was transitioning my father. And I eventually this, I will have a documentary out. It's going to be helping people Um, how to create a beautiful transition with their loved ones. My father and I were able to co-create his ending. And that sounds really bizarre for people to, to understand that there were no words that were consciously said, but I used to journal to him and tell him, you know, let me take you as far as, as I can, you know, to the other side. And so we ended up dying right next to me. And afterwards, you know, the summit was the easiest thing for me to be able to get. I I realized collectively that people are going through a lot of grief at this time. It's not like, you know, we haven't had, you know, grief is new, um, but it's just collectively, I believe, because we've gone through a lot of isolation. We couldn't be there with our loved ones. I mean, everyone knows this. You know, it's kind of hung out. And then with another lockdown, I mean, there's just been grief encompasses a lot of emotions. It encompasses fear, you know, and I think a lot of people are feeling a lot of fear about being able to go out and be who they were before. 
so the series is, you know, I, I, I thought about this earlier. I'm like, why would I do this in the summer? Well, it's summer here in America. Um, but, you know, we're going to be headed towards colder weather, you know, being indoors, you know, the flu season. And I wanted to do this now so people would have some tools for them when they move forward. And you and I, you were one of my, one of my favorite interviews because we got to talk about on the other side of the veil. And I love it that you can communicate with loved ones on the other side. And, you know, I channel myself, but I, I don't do it. You know, there's a, I'm sort of like a Jane of many traits. So, and this, and, the, and I love to put on these online productions for people. You do. And um, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of your of your dreams coming to fruition, really. And, you know, um, I know it sounds totally crazy, but I know that my career actually literally kicked off with the summit for months. And the funny thing, the irony about it is all I wanted to do was talk about Mum's Spiritually Awakening because I knew I was a medium. I was really just coming out of my mediumship closet. Like my husband didn't even know what was going on. I was just kind of aligning to that. And so I made it about mums um, coming out and turning up their superpowers and their geniuses and all these different things and choosing for themselves. And literally all these things weave in because your gut health one, you know, and at the time that you're, I remember you messaging me saying that your father had passed. And at this time, you were in the middle of doing a summit. And a summit is one of the, for those who haven't done one, is one of the most challenging things that you ever do. There's a lot of pieces involved. Um, and like so, the <laughs> Yeah, it, it is, is a show. It's a show. Yeah, you have to do. Every, you have to do the back end, the front end. You, I mean, deliver the content. Um, make sure that everything is working right. Uh, you know, and you're investing. You're investing yourself. Um, I didn't realize when I when I went into doing a summit what it was and how it was going to cost me a lot of money. I was just like, I've got to do this thing. But I tell you what, like. It changes lives. And I know that you want to reach people. How many people are you? Have you got it kind of got like a number or a feeling of the impact that you're wanting the summit to, to create? Well, and I think to your point, you know, whether it's collectively, I don't know how many people are going to be reached as a result of this how I know many that the do you want to reach what is the impact that you are wanting oh well i want to reach you know millions of people of course i mean that's a given but even if i've even if the summit has touched one life and really in help someone one of the, my biggest concerns as I was going through this, and, and I don't know over in New Zealand, but I know in the United States, the suicide rate mm -hmm. is higher. And part of that, you know, disconnection, when you go through the emotions of losing someone or losing, you know, your, and, and you be, start to become disconnected, you get the brain fog, you get depression. You're, mm -hmm. you're thinking uh, that gut-brain connection, you, you don't have um, the same cognitive skills that you would, especially when you're going through raw grief, you, you, you just don't. And so if, if this could be towards help for mental health awareness and for suicide prevention, I'm all for it. I mean, I, I know for me that um, I suffered physical manifestations as a result of what I went through with the loss, uh, the different losses that I had over the last couple of years mm -hmm. and it all accumulated in my body. And so I'm fearful that people are going to be, end up getting chronic illness as a result of not dealing with the things that have changed in their lives. And a lot of people have lost careers Mm -hmm. um, they've lost businesses, you know, you, you, you know it and let yeah. alone loved ones that they couldn't even be with. And nobody wants to talk about this. And I, and I understand 
Why? Because it's a heavy subject. But at the same time, if you have this communal space, the other part that I really wanting to have people do is to start to loved ones that have gone start to learn how to when you're feeling that I really miss them. What is it? You know, how could you mirror with another person and help that loved one come through them? So you as a medium, you have people coming through you all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you were to coach me and to say, okay, you know, your uncle Harry, we're going to have him come through you, Diana. What would you tell me that you would ask me to do to get my uncle Harry to come and visit me? Well, the way I see it is it's a conversation. It's like going and having coffee. So be having a coffee with your uncle and you and me. It's not about like, let's get the crystal ball out and let's see what we can see. And it's not all like woo-woo, la-di-da, um, you know, get out the wand, even though I do have a wand and all the things. It's more about, <laughs> hey, uncle, where is he for a start? So my first question would be, where is he? Because I can't guarantee that your uncle is going to come through because this is a three-way thing. It's not a two-way thing. So, for instance, like my grandparents, my grandfathers are right here right now, which is really interesting that they're here with me in this room. Um, I've got like one on each side. So that's telling me that um, you probably have got your father with you and also your grandparents because there's a mirror. There's a mirror. So sometimes we can't oh. control on who's coming through, right? But when I started just tapping in there, I was like, what actually is going on? And who really, really wants to? And where is your uncle? And where is this? And then all of a sudden, boom, grandparents. And I'm like, oh, and it's your father. Oh, and your grandparents. What is going on? There's something to do. With it. Anyway, I, basically, to answer your question is I would say where your uncle is, where is he? Does he know he's dead for a start? That's the first question. Does he even know he's passed? That's huge. That's why I'm an energy clearer first before a medium. I need to make sure they're okay and if they need me to serve them. I serve spirit just as I serve humans. Um, and then I make them aware that if they've, they don't know that they've passed, I let them know, hey, mate, you've actually passed. But you have a choice now to even expand more in consciousness um, and then usually I see that spirit turn around and eventually as I'm talking to you and building rapport and tapping into energy and clearing your space and all that type of stuff. So I'm inviting you energetically to drop your barriers, to open your heart, to get rid of any fear because fear and love do not, they don't intermix um, at all. So I can't have people sitting there going, ah, what am I going to see? What I, like Because it's not going to work like that. So I connect with them. I connect with you. And then I go, right, are we going to have a coffee? Do our times match up? You know, so right now I could actually turn here and say, yeah, your dad is here and he's got his hand on your shoulder. I hope you don't mind me doing this. It's just what's just happening. And he's going, yeah, I am yeah. so proud of you. I am so, so I don't know where Uncle Henry is, like if even if Uncle Henry is real. I don't have like, one. Okay. Because <laughs> so I'm like, I can't feel him. I can't feel him, but I can tell you what I can feel, right? So um, I've had. You found my dad and I do have him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, of course, your dad's standing there, right? Beautiful man, by the way. Beautiful and um, very handsome in his time. He just wants to let me tell you that. Um, and he's standing there, put his hand on your shoulder, right? And he's just so, so proud of you, right? That, that he's just, he's just showing me that. Um, so I can't feel Uncle Henry because he doesn't exist, right? And my grandparents are here now. Why are my grandparents here? Probably to support me because we need support because. The truth is, you know, spirit are still their spirit. Their souls move on, but your dad's always going to be your dad. And when you pass on, you're still going to be Diana. Your soul is, I was telling my eight-year-old in the bath last night, your soul is going to go and have all these experiences, but you're still going to have the blueprint of you. Your body is going to go into the earth, but you're still going to have you and you're still probably going to visit people and knowing you and you're going to be having drop-ins and letting people know and you're going to be very, very active. But you also need to know that you have died for a start because you don't all of a sudden go, whoa, I'm conscious, I've seen the light. It's not like that. It's like, do you know that you're dead? Um, what are you choosing? Do you have any fear about moving on? And I actually have to coach the dead people. 
And then what actually, and that's why I can talk to people that have committed suicide and I let them talk to me because I have no judgment and no fear of them. Mm. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. I would basically tell somebody to, um, I would work on them energetically first and I would respect that spirit. And I would say, I can't control if Uncle Henry's going to come in, but there is a man here and he's actually on your, we're on Zoom right now, but he's on your, I would say your left-hand side. So on this side here, and he's got his hand on, which is telling me that he is supporting you and he's enjoying this. And in fact, we've got a room full of spirits. I've got my grandparents here, which is hilarious. We've got your dad here. They're enjoying this conversation because they're like, this never happened in, in our time, in our reality. This is what the heck, you know? Um, and that they just feel, they're just interested because they're still learning. And when, as a Reiki master, when I was working with him in those last few days, the one night the Friday night, I had set myself as I was driving there, you know, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this together. And then when he started wanting to slip away, I was, I was like, no, 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 no. And I was grabbing his feet and cause I wasn't mentally, emotionally ready. And then the next day when my brother walked out of the room, he, he like shook his finger at me. He kind of came to, and he sat up in the bed and he said, you thought it was your hocus pocus, but I knew I'd get better today, you know, because he would was drifting in and out. Um, there's so much. There's so much that I want to tell people about what's possible for them with their family members. It's hard to even articulate it into words, but just having, um, you know, when you think a thought about someone, uh, a loving thought, and there was. Several months ago, I thought a loving thought about you. And then all of a sudden you, you showed up on Instagram and, you know, I think it was Facebook or Instagram or something. And I was in the live with you. And, you know, so what I'm really wanting people to know is that there's so much, you know, exercising that sixth sense and, it's, it's, it's like anyone else. If you don't know how to play basketball and you try to shoot a ball up in the hoop, most likely you're not going to hit the hoop on the first shot. You could get lucky, right? But when people say, I don't know how to do that. I'm not, I'm not connected. I don't have any intuition. You're wrong. We're born with intuition and it's about practice, practice, practice. And the more still you get, and, you know, a lot of people can't sit still and they don't like to meditate. Well, one of the women that I interviewed for the show, she does, uh, she does sound healing. So if you've ever gone to sound baths, and I'm sure that you have, Victoria, you know, they're amazing because no words are spoken. It's just this vibrational sound that hits the core of your soul, you know, as you lay there and, and the different bowls are going. So there's different ways that we can connect and tap in to our own mediumship. And I know that you teach this and I just think it's a very fascinating field. And as we move forward in time, I want that sixth sense mm -hmm. to be a normal sense. You know, some people are better at, you know, visual things. Some people are better at auditory or smelling or, you know, feeling. Um, so that sixth sense is is very possible mm. and it, you're right it is a muscle and if you don't if you don't have a clear energy because of all the programming and the conditioning um this is what i teach in magnificent mediumship this is what i was talking about and was live reading today on my group i mean on my personal page where i read for all these different people um as i'm just this clear channel with a clear aura like um just before this call i i did um Paleo Santo around me to make sure I'm a yeah. clear channel. So probably that's why right. these guys all came through who are still standing here, by the way. Um, and the interesting thing about it is I know if I'm a clear channel that my thoughts are always, they are always my intuition. I have practiced not thinking. I have practiced being a clear vessel. I have practiced cleaning my aura. I have practiced reading books like The Power of Now and implementing that. Because all of the stuff, whether your gut health, is the irony of doing this and the grief that you went through was you did the, the gut health summit, 
Mine was about mum's time to shine, which is exactly what I'm doing now. And yeah. it's nearly like we had premeditated what we required, learned all the things, shared it out with the world as because we are projectors, so that's our job, and then basically could go back to that and share in a different way. This is just another level of that, which is intuition. And we all do it so, so differently, but the universe loves speed. I haven't been doing this, for, I've been doing it my whole life, we have been, but I've only been a medium who gets paid for the last two years. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And when I made that decision that I'm different and I would like to be a medium, it dropped down. I was basically uploaded like the matrix. I actually had an experience like the matrix where I literally just like channeled it all in. I went, holy shit, I'm a medium. And the next minute I'm doing it. Now that doesn't, I'm quite a dramatic person. So things happen very fast for me. It could be, uh, it was like an awakening that was like a massive smack, right? But it doesn't have to, it happens in different ways. It happens in a muscle. I also like to run marathons and train in a very short amount of time. Some people like to train for six months for a marathon. Mine's six weeks. So it depends on what you want. Now, anyone that comes in, what you said before, you know, with this fixed mindset of that's not me, that's not me, that's not me, they're usually the people that are the most gifted. <laughs> See this over and over again. People come in and go, oh, I'm so good at mediumship. They come and do my programs and they're the people that struggle. The people that come in and go, oh, why am I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? I don't know why I'm here. They're usually the most gifted. Now, the thing is with life coaching, as you know, because you're a coach, is we've got fixed mindset or growth mindset. And when I decided that if I'm a medium, because it's the intuitive hits that I was getting, then I had nothing to do but to lean back and receive my gifts and just try and start playing with this muscle. And I was shit scared. When I made that decision, I was downloaded so hard and fast, and now I have programs where I teach mediumship. Do you think I learned mediumship of anyone else? No. I channel it. And that's what everyone is capable of doing if they have a clear space, if they understand that fear does not belong here. And death is never, it's not real. Death is, is just transformation, as I was saying to and my eight in the bath. It's really interesting that you mentioned that because I remember in 2017, in the spring of 2017, before I moved to California, and there was a medium that was having, um, it was in a restaurant, and she was really channeling through the whole room. And I, I've used her before, and um, I've been to her before, and then at the end when we were packing up, she asked me, she said, oh, she goes, did you, I didn't ask you, was there anything that you wanted to know? And I said, well, I wanted to know if my sister had a message for me and my sister who had passed and she looked at me and she said, she wants you to know never to be afraid ever again in your life. Well, it's really, you know, because we're in human form and fear is the biggest thing that stops us from living our lives. And that's all tied into grief. Um, we, by us being stuck in that grief, we're afraid to make any changes for our future because we don't want recurring circumstances to present themselves again. We don't want to get our hearts broken. You know, we, we, we don't want to open up again. Right. And this as difficult as it is, the more you are, you know, you, you connect with yourself, you're able to open up and know that there is no such thing as death. There's transitioning and there is different ways of a relationship that in order to have a relationship with your loved one, you have to move into a new space. Um, mm -hmm. But once you move into that new space, you don't have that same sense of loneliness and and sadness that you had before. I mean, granted, you're never, you know, in this lifetime, I'm not going to be able to hold my dad, you know, where I can really hold him, you know, yeah. feel him. But when I'm in that moment, I can feel him, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what's so beautiful yeah. about your summit is the thing is, we have to, even though I'm a medium, like, Grief 
like you said, the human has to grieve. One of my clients was just a magnificent mediumship. Her granddad has just passed. And she's like, Wah! like, she's really upset. She's like, can you guys support me? Because I'm like, it's COVID over here. Like, we're in lockdown. No one was with him, yada, yada, yada. And I said to her, your human has to grieve. Um, but, of course, you know he's with you and you can talk to him. So don't forget that. He's going through this transition. And this is why the summit is so important because I was standing there happy and my granddad's passed away yeah he's no more pain I'm smiling and talking at his funeral and I realized everyone else is grieving and I was like oh oh of course they have to grieve now I can give them understanding but it doesn't take away that you you missed your dad even though he's right with you right now you miss him you wish you could just have a chat to him right like it, and your sister and your mom it doesn't change the fact that you you know, you lost those people. Just the fact that you're a medium doesn't mean that you don't miss them. Of course you miss them. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, you know, my biggest love is, is just really wanting to get as much information to as many people as I possibly can to help them. And so, you know, having speakers like you on the show and being able to highlight your work and, and in, intuitively knowing in each interview what to ask people so they could really expand on themselves and their gifts and their techniques to help people shift because that's what this really is about. Mm. You know, you can register, you can go through journey through grief uh, with grace. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a link in the show notes. You can look me up on Instagram. You can find that and then you, you can register There'll be a 48-hour replay at the end, uh, but every single day, a new interview is going to pop in, and it might just, you know, shift your awareness or something that's said by someone might trigger a memory, and you, you can actually move it into a new space, if that makes sense. Mm. And if you get, so if like anyone that you have, anyone who registers for this amazing free summit, even if they drop that point of view, or even listening to this, to this, um, you know, this interview, um, even if they drop their fear and get right. something, get something from one speaker that can change your entire reality, um, or shift your perspective, or drop a judgment, or anything. Like I have been, in all honesty, afraid to talk about the fact that I have been talking to people who have committed suicide. For, to be completely honest with you, for like 16 years I've been doing this. I just didn't know I was doing it. I thought it was in my head. When I'm, when I'm driving along and there's this girl next to me and I was like, what? What do you want? Because it's normal. It becomes normal. You just don't know you're doing it, but everyone's doing it in a form. That is what I show people to do. I show them how they are doing it, not how to do it how they're already doing it and like that muscle turning it up. You've got legs, but you've got to know how to work those legs out, like you said before. I think the, you're helping them to become aware of their own gifts. It's the awareness. Um, and so that's, that's the big thing is that, you know, someone that's already doing this, this other medium that I had, I, the one question I did ask him, I said, what, what do our loved ones, and it's so funny that we're talking about fear, um, because I said, what do our loved ones on the other side really want us to know? And he said, collectively, he said, they want us to not be afraid. Mm -hmm. He said, especially with what's going on and, and how things are moving, he, he said, he, he, they just keep saying over and over and over again. Don't be afraid. Yeah. And there's, well, in, but I, I think about, you know, people with the pandemic, mm -hmm. so many people are in such fear that they want, they stop making plans for the future. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because they make plans for the fear of what if this happens? And yeah. then I can't, I can't do this because what if this happens? Well, 90% yeah. of what ifs never happen. 
And right. this is exact. Yeah, I remember my mum saying that to me when I was little. The biggest <laughs> thing is though, and this is what my biggest thing, my impact that I'm trying to bring out at the moment, uh, and that's why I'm showing up on my Victoria Bond page instead of my groups and I'm doing readings and stuff like that, is I'm no longer hiding that I'm a medium or that I'm gifted. I'm no longer hiding that I'm seemingly weird and woo-woo. I like language for goodness sakes. I'm talking a different language. It's called talking in tongues if you're religious. And, you know, and like I said, 16 years ago when this girl was in my car, and I'm like, what? Do you think I can see with my eyes? No. It's a thought. It's like she's in there. I go, what do you want? And I was like, look, I've got to go to work. I'm having this chat to her. Later on that day, one of my best friends messages me and says, oh, it's this girl's birthday. And usually you message the parents. Because intuitively, I would message the parent, I don't know times and dates and birthdays and death dates or anything like that, but I'd message them and go, how are you guys going? And it would be her anniversary. But I didn't on this day, but she was in my car and I was very well aware of that. And I would just see these things as nothing. Like, oh, don't be so silly. Don't be so silly. But then when I realized and I get this whisper and this thing that you are a medium, and I was like, okay, I better get out of this fixed mindset, these judgments, these considerations, these fears that I've bought into of the collective of my upbringing and all the things, when I changed that and went, what else is possible? And maybe this is my path. And I was like, don't be so stupid. You failed at school. You're dyslexic. You're not gifted. You don't see ghosts. Then I was like, no, what if I do it in a different way? What if I am here and have an impact? Because one thing's for sure, certain, I've got a burning desire to live, right? So then what I actually did was like the only thing that got me through when I was depressed and I had post depression was this burning thing. What is this? What is this? You're here for big things. You're here for big things. So my point of the story is, even though we have basically, we've lost millions of people to this pandemic, it's just, it's been terrible. I don't know the numbers or anything like that, but it's terrible, terrible, terrible. We have to get creative. We have to learn how to evolve, how to transform, how to show up, not to give up. Because if you're giving up, you're dying. And if you're dying, it may not be physically. It's spiritually. And that's even worse. You have a choice to stay here in your body and to transform, not give up. And the biggest thing, it's ironic that I did the gut health series because it's And there was so much attention on that because when people started to feel discomfort, they wanted to fix it. So, but when you fit, when you feel emotional and spiritual discomfort, we get conditioned to accept it. And you're not living the full expansion of who you really are when you're walking around like that. And when you end up understanding that, a lot of the emotions that you have that are negative, that are running through you, have nothing to do with you. They could be ancestral. Yeah. Um, and you start to learn how to clear a lot of things. You start to live a much healthier life mm. because healing is occurs from the inside out. So I always give this analogy of like a seawall. When the ocean comes running up, And it spills over the wall, right? So you have your etheric body. And when when that becomes too full, it spills over into the emotional body. And then we start to have the depression, the crying, all of the different types of emotions that we have with it. But then when that's too overloaded, it starts to crowd into the physical body which the physical body, people start to have, they can have it anywhere between, you know, if it heart, uh, broken heart syndrome, you know, heart palpitations to all different types of things that can lead to chronic disease. If you mm-hmm. just ignore the emotions that started it all. And yeah, so that's what you're taught, right? That's what you're conditioned is. Your human body is the only thing that you have to be aware of. And then we ignore that anyway. And we drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes and do drugs to try and get to repress those. I don't know about you guys over there, but we're a drinking culture in New Zealand. So it's like you start drinking at 15, right? And and we're binge drinkers, not like in France where you have a glass of wine with your cheese. It's like, oh, yeah, let's get on it. 
But (laughs) you have to be clear. You have to be clean. The first thing I teach a mediumship is to go clean up your energy, clean your house, clean your car, clean your body, clean your mind, because if you want to be a real channel, a proper channel, a pure channel of love, which is what you're doing, Diana, this is what you're doing. You're channeling by doing this, by holding space. This is a form of channeling that you're doing. Um, And you're bringing people in to enhance that. So thank you for that. You know, thank you so much for that. And you've done that because you cleaned out, you cleared, you fixed any energy leaks and you said, now I'm ready to do this for the world. This is what we do. This is your genius. Right. Well, this is, you know, I mean, anyone that can share this link you know, please do. It's it's free access to the series, and there, it's over ten hours of work, of of listening for people that you know that you don't have to listen to it all in one day. Although it will be available at the end, um, like that. But you know, it's it's just it's just going within a little bit more. And you know, when you someone listens to you and I speak. I hope it will resonate with them. And, um, you know, you definitely, you can, you can find me through uh, dianaprevis.com. You can find me, you know, you can find the series um, Journey Through Grief with Grace and um, and sign up. Mm. That's what we're looking for. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to actually add in as well is, it's not just what you can consciously get with your your mind. A lot of what I do, and I'm sure a lot of the speakers are the same. I can't speak for them. I haven't listened to the interviews. But a lot of it is about actually cleaning up and bringing that, that subconscious stuff to the forefront. So then what I call shadows sometimes is, is the fears might come up and there may be some things that I say or other speakers say that trigger you, that go, oh, you know, um, and that's exactly what I want people to do when they listen to me is I want them to be triggered or to be a little bit like, what is that? I don't get it. And the, and start actually getting interested in it because then the shifts happen. So the reason why you're perfect for doing the summit, Diana, is you've lost the people that are closest to you, you know, and that actually makes you an expert in grief because you've had to go through it. Now, I have not lost parents or siblings. And I can't even comprehend that amount of grief. All I know is what I get from spirit when I'm talking, sibling to sibling, parent to um, parent to child. I feel it and I cry because I'm an empath. So um, in real life, I'm not actually emotional very much at all. But when I'm talking to spirit, I feel everything and the tears come and all the things. I think that might have happened a little bit in the interview, actually. Um, some emotions came up when I was tapping into spirit. But um Yeah, so I just want to say, you know, to wrap this up, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for bringing this out because I try one live at a time with one medium at a time and what you're doing here. And I just ask anyone who's watching this to share the summit. Now, this is, um, you've done this out of the kindness of your heart. This isn't a moneymaker. And all of the speakers, this is not a moneymaker. That's the biggest thing that I knew about doing my summit myself was it cost me thousands to do, but I would still do it all over again because I made an impact. I made an impact to thousands of people. And this is exactly why I was a part of this summit because I am here to make an impact. And so is Diana. And so is all these other people. And so are you if you're watching. You're here to make an impact in the way you know how, right? So it may not look the same, but you will get similarities with your own genius. It is, it is pretty interesting when I, I, as an empath, when I would listen to other people's stories, some, some people on the show had lost children. Um, Some people had lost spouses unexpectedly. Um, And when I was, even getting ready to do their interview or when we were in the interview, I would start to get choked up because mm-hmm. I could feel the energy of their loved one. I could feel them in the room, um, especially, and they, and they felt the same way. Um, you know, I was just like every, every single time I was getting, you know, you do a little bit of 
talking ahead of time to say, hey, do you, would you want to partner with me on this? And we'd have a dialogue just like you and I had a dialogue. And then we, I could feel their loved ones in that space. Mm-hmm. And like, well, they want you to do this. So there's a dedication page in the workbook of all the, the loved ones that had died um, that I could feel their energy. energy. Oh. So I feel that they helped to be a part of the summit. Yeah. And um, the one woman that had done a sound bowl rendition, she says, I've done tons of inter- in- interviews in my lifetime. She goes, but never have I gotten worked up like this. And I said, well, you know, he's here. He's helping you. Her son was helping her. So it really is. It's journey through grief with grace.com. And you sign, you know, you can register and Victoria has an amazing interview. I snuck her right. I didn't want to have her too much in the beginning. I wanted to have people wait to, to be able to see you. But um, you're nestled right in the middle. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to listening to your interview again. It was, you do a great job of helping people to understand that and touching on that about, you know, people that have committed suicide, because, Mm -hmm. you know, before I did this interview series, I didn't even ever think about what they thought once they had transitioned on the other side, you know? Right. Yeah. And you you can only go by the clients that you worked with. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just wanted to say as well, that is why my grandparents and your dad are here as well, because you're saying the spirits come in and been a part of the show and be like, why are they standing here? Like, because they're very just like your dad doesn't really say, by the way, something about, I just wanted to add in like flowers um because obviously i've got flowers here and i don't know about it could be his birthday um these are daffodils so they're march but um his hand being there and then i saw bright beautiful flowers so i felt like um he either was a gardener who loved flowers and he was very bright because i all bright beautiful colors or he was giving you flowers like you know congratulations type of thing so well maybe he was giving me flowers because he's He wasn't, he was, we used to say he was a little bit of a wallflower because he was, you know, standing up. My dad was a man of few words, but, you know, when he did speak, they were very powerful words and he was a very handsome man. So, yes. And I I got that. I always, they always tell me, they always, I'm like, I always know if they're handsome or short or I just, I always know like, wow, he was, and I mean, you're absolutely stunning. So there's no surprises there, but, um, of course, um, they're here to support us, right? So that's why they're here. And sometimes that's all it is. They don't have a big profound, like, vision to tell you about the future. They're just like, I'm here to love you and support you. Isn't that enough? Because that's what they would do in real life. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Thanks, I really Jerry. appreciate the opportunity. And um, I look forward to anyone watching to sign up and register and be a part of the community. We're going to be having like a, a Facebook group. And cause I've, I've gotten different connections of people saying, Hey, are you going to start? And so I'm even thinking about, you know, inviting you in and, and different, you know, to figuring that out because people, once they are vulnerable enough and they just, I, I said earlier in an Instagram live, I'm like, nobody has to know that you registered for the series. You can just register and then have it come in your inbox. And mm. then because people want, people want to grieve quietly about your, their emotions, but those hidden emotions, they go down into your endocrine system. So let's get that up and out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you really need the gut health alongside with it, don't you? Um, and I think it's, it's just huge because it's not just about the grieving of people that have passed away, it's about grieving of the jobs, it's about grieving of um, your lives looking so different. Um, when people are losing everything, and like I said, I, I, I want people to become creative and share their geniuses and find a way. And this is a way, this is something that will help. There'll be one speaker or a few speakers or one word or many words that can change your reality and just take you out of any type of fixed mindset into what else is possible. Right. Thank you so much for doing this, Diana, from the bottom of my heart. 
Thank you from Spirit. Um, thank you, granddads. <laughs> thank you, Diana's beautiful father, who um, was a huge catalyst for this, as well as your mom and your sister. I know they are there with you right now, um, backing you. You've got your team, and I'm just so grateful that you've taken the time to share share this journey. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all inside the summit. Okay. See you later. Bye. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining the Release Your Blocks podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear from you. So please leave a review and tell me what your favorite takeaway from today was. There is so much more from where this came from. You can also find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find more content, more coaching, and more guidance. Have a grand and glorious day, and I'll see you next time.